today y'all are at a stress workshop. And a lot of times when we've done these, people don't want to come because they're like, I'm already stressed. I don't want to be beaten up over the stuff I'm doing wrong that is going to cause me to be more stressed. But I, uh, I was talking with the CEO, and the CEO told me, she goes, Dr. Ben, how are you going to help my stress? Are you going to take care of my payroll? Are you going to take care of my employees? Are you going to take care of the finances, insurance? Are you going to do any of that? I said, no, what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to get your body working how God intended it to. Take it uh, in making sure that it's functioning at the highest level. That naturally is going to decrease the stress that's going in your body so it's not nearly as profound of what's going, what's going on. So we want to make sure you take notes and you take this information home and implement it today. Yeah, definitely our intention of today is we want to, we want you to, we want to put you on a pivot point so you go forward and make changes and don't just walk away saying, well, that was some very interesting information. Try to implement as much as you can because we want, our whole intention is to make a change in your life today. So we want to give you some good information. Hopefully you move forward and uh, see some great changes in your life. So we identified four types of stress that we think are the hardest on your body, on your earthly vessel. So it's uh, mental, emotional stress, nervous system stress, chemical stress, and dietary stress. So we're gonna teach you, take you through those four different types of stress and things that you can do to get rid of those in your life. Um, and the truth is three out of four doctor's visits can somehow be linked back to stress. 77% um, of people um, regularly experience physical symptoms of stress and 73% regularly experience emotional symptoms of stress. So stress is a big deal, and if we can get it under wraps, hopefully that's gonna help us re reduce our trips to the doctor's office and keep us healthier. And sometimes stress can be a good thing. Like for instance, I need a deadline to get something done. You know, for a perfect example is, is Darren asked me to have this slideshow done by Wednesday, and he got it promptly on Thursday. <laughs> you know, I had months, I knew it was coming, but I just, you know, I need that deadline, and then I work really efficiently and get it done. And sometimes stress can be good. Those deadlines force us to, you know, work hard and get stuff done, be our most efficient. So stress can be good in that respect. Um, stress can be good if you look at going to the gym, you know, putting stress on your body, building muscles, getting healthier. So stress in that respect can be good. Um, but then there's other things like financial stress, relationship stress, work stress, um, health stress. So 54% of people um, say that stress has caused them to fight with people that are close to them. So definitely, you know, let's do whatever we can to decrease the bad stress in our life. And, but we have to also acknowledge that stress can be good. So, um, and here's, here's the big driving thing when it comes to stress. There's two um, systems in your body. You've got your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic. Sympathetic st equals stress. So S, S, sympathetic stress. Remember that. So sympathetic mode, that's fight or flight. So if you've got a bear about to attack you, it's really good to have your sympathetic nervous system. The adrenaline starts firing, your muscles get ready to run or to fight the bear with a knife, whatever you're going to do. But you need that sympathetic nervous system, right? Um, but then parasympathetic is rest or digest mode. Um, you know, that's uh, when your body heals, when you rest, you digest, you, you repair when you're in the parasympathetics. So if we spend too long in the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight mode, you can't relax. You're constantly at that elevated, ready to fl you know, flee mode. Um, you're constantly, you, you just can't, uh, you can't relax. Also, your adrenals are firing, so what happens is you're feeling good for a while, but our bodies aren't meant to sustain that. So you're not meant to run from a bear all day long. <laughs> it's supposed to be really quick, right? So what happens is you're good for a while, but then you start getting tired, you know? So if you're that person around midday, you know, you need a three o'clock coffee, but the next thing, it, it's a 2.45 coffee. <laughs> you know, the next day, it's a 2.15 coffee. Then it's a 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Then you start going for the, the energy drinks. You know, that means you're running in that sympathetic mode if you start crashing midday because you, you're just not meant to be in that fight or flight mode all day. Um, a really good way to tell if you're in fight or flight mode is this. So we actually, Dr. Ben and I decided that we're going to make you all honorary doctors for the next minute. Okay, so for the next minute, we want everybody <laughs> to stand up, pick somebody to partner with, and what you need to do, so Ben's going to be my model, and what, I, what we're going to do, actually, let's turn them this way. So you're going to look at your partner, 
and look at where their ear is in relation to the center of their shoulder. So that's a sympathetic posture. When you carry your head forward like that, that means you're in fight or flight mode. All the muscles here are tight, so you can fight. And then the muscles back here tighten up so then you can run. So you're ready to respond to stress. So that's the number one sign that your, your body is experiencing physical stress is, is you're in that sympathetic nervous system fight or flight mode posture. So just take a look at each other. Turn to the person next to you. And then look at the side. See where their head is with the shoulders. Y'all see that? Okay. You already did it? Turn to the next Turn, turn around, do it to the other person. Did anybody see anybody with this posture? Any stress diagnoses, Any stress doctor? People? That, oh, okay. All right, <laughs> doctors, what you have to do next is break out your prescription pad and you write a prescription for chiropractic care. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely something that we can help with as chiropractors through the adjustments, through exercises. And we're going to teach you some stuff today that's going to help with, with these stress postures. So. You look like you're about to say something. No, next slide's mine. Okay, next slide's his. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the, oh, wait, never actually, mind. Not, as I <laughs> okay, so some signs that you're stressed. Um, also, you know, it comes with fl fleeing from a bear. Your blood pressure's going to go up, right? So your blood pressure goes up. Um, decreased insulin res uh, resistance. So uh, basically... The, the less your body, your cells hear insulin, the more insulin your body needs to produce to get the job done. So we're seeing more and more um, insulin-related problems, diabetes. Um, so our insulin sensitivity gets killed if we're constantly in, in, um, in stress mode because we're not set up for digesting when we're in stress mode. So it's definitely going to contribute to diabetic stuff. Um, and the way you tell, like it's, it's not without going to your doctor and getting a bunch of blood tests done, the way you can tell is usually you have a meal and then after your meal, because of the spike in insulin, you might feel the need for something sweet. You know, and then after you have something sweet, you get another hour or two and then you experience the crash and that's when you need to go for your coffee or your energy drinks. That's a sign that you're experiencing um, increased resistance to insulin. So your body is having to make, each time it just has to make a bigger and bigger insulin spike to get the job done. And that's kind of, that's when you get into that, what they call pre-diabetic. Um, so that's a sign of stress. And the, that's the way you can tell. Um, increased heart rate. So you might physically feel your heart rate racing if you check your pulse. Um, sometimes people can just feel that happening. And then of course, we talked about the famous forward head posture. They call it, it's becoming kind of chronic. They call it text neck now, but I think it's just because our, our world is more and more stressful. So we're getting more and more of that sympathetic posture. So now I'm going to let Dr. Ben get into the nerdy stuff here. Yes. I, it, I love the nerdy up the brain. stuff. And actually, um, uh, Noreen's husband, Greg, is the one who uh, kind of got me into the nerdy stuff. I, I was a mechanic. I under, wanted to understand why, but uh, he would always ask me why. Why? Do this. So that cr created a stress response in me. And I could either do one or, one or two things. I could stress and kick him out of my practice, or I could learn from it, it, which is one of the ways our body's supposed to deal with stress. If I lift a weight, the more I lift it, the stronger I get. Well, learning this information created, uh, created that building, that adapting factor for me. So when somebody asks me questions, I don't stress anymore. That's one thing you can do in your daily lives. But what happens actually in your brain when you're in a stress response, your red nucleus is going to fire. What the red nucleus naturally does is rolls your shoulders forward, causes the head to come forward, the, the abdomen starts to tighten, the hip flexors tighten, so you do like this. How many times have you, uh, have you ever had to go into a meeting and you know it's about to be a bad meeting? And you sit there and everything just tightens up. That's your red nucleus is, is firing, is overly firing. So you can check yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're having that tension in between your shoulder blades, right at the top of the shoulders right here, your traps, or you even have that tension right at the base of the skull starting to create headaches, then your red nucleus is overly firing. This is one of the reasons upper cervical adjustment top of the neck are so specific and so effective is because we start to take the strain off, allowing that brain to work the way it's supposed to. The inferior colliculus. Uh, okay, this is one that moms know a lot about. You know when you're stressed out, okay, you've done everything and all the kids are screaming and you finally get them to be quiet in the slightest noise. You're like, I told you to be quiet. 
That was, that was you know, my, kind of my house growing up. But, uh, but that's your inf- inferior colliculus is going. This is where the slightest noises are so amplified that they, start to give you, that they start to give you headaches and then they set you off. They actually cause a fight or, even more of a fight or flight. Uh, the superior colliculus, this is one of the ways I check my patients to see if they're overly stressed. The pupils, when this is firing, those pupils are really big. And when those pupils are really big, the body is trying to take in as much information. So Dr. Gerard talked about the bear chasing you. Okay, if your bear ch- is chasing you, you want your pupils big so you can find the f- closest tree to be able to climb up. You want to see the complete environment. But this also gives us light sensitivity. And so when the light sensitivities happen, this can create headaches because the pupils aren't closing to limit the amount of light that is, that's happening in your body. So if you look uh, at your spouse or somebody that you work with and you see their pupils are really, really big in a light room like this, you can go, okay, that person is stressed out. And that's also one of the things that you can check to see if you're improving is if your pupils are actually starting to be able to close, that means your adrenals are actually being able to function properly. And so, and this is where light in a, in a dark room prevents you from sleeping. And so we're going to go over a few of the steps that you can do in order to help with that. But for the main diagnosis that we see associated with stress are actually uh, uh, adrenal exhaustion, thyroid dysfunction. How many of y'all know somebody who is, uh, has hypothyroidism or has taken some sort of thyroid medication or thyroid support? It's becoming more and more prevalent the more stress we have. Uh, estrogen progesterone ratio disturbances. What this is, what's happening with this is we see hormones are all over the place. How many of y'all have seen these hormone replacement therapies centers just popping up? They're becoming so common because we are so stressed. We're so wired and tired. And what this is doing is this is creating what's called leaky gut. When you have leaky gut happening, your body's not able to digest food properly which it makes sense. If you're running from a bear, do you need to be able to digest food? You would be able to get up the tree. So, that's one of the, so those, are, those are the four primary diagnoses. But here's a lot of the symptoms. Shoulder, neck pain. We're seeing sensitivity to light, headaches, migraines, brain fog, light sleeper, vivid, vivid dreams, anxiety, and depression. Do you know what the number one most uh, increase in prescription medication is? is actually in psychotropic drugs, depression. Uh, Increased risk of stroke, inflammation, gallbladder disturbances, hormone imbalances. You can see difficulty losing weight, sex drive is uh, not working right, fibroids, fatigue. That's a lot of symptoms, right? And one of the things I like like about talking about symptoms is those are like check engine lights. I was a mechanic. So whenever I saw a check, so whenever I saw a check engine light, do you think it was the engine that was the problem or the, the light that was the problem? No, it was the engine. And so this is what we're talking about today is getting down the root cause of what's happening in your stress. And one of the t- fo- reasons we tell folks don't pop pills uh, to fix this. Medicine serves an amazing purpose in saving people's lives. So if you get hit by a car, you probably need some of the modern medicine. But what we're doing is we're popping pills to mask the symptoms going on in our, uh, in our body. If I took my car to a mechanic and had a check engine light, and they put duct tape over it and said, hey, your bill is $3,000, would I let that fly? No. So why do we do that to our bodies? This is where getting down that root cause. If you have, um, I used to be one of these folks who would take Advil, aspirin for headaches, for pain, uh, all the time. I'd take Motrin 800, two of them, to be able to work out. Then I found out it caused kidney failures. Then we see headaches, migraines. If those are you, if that, if that red nucleus is, is firing, causing that tension, and you're taking Imitrax or tryptophan, it can cause anxiety, se- severe stomach pain. So if it's creating anxiety, what am I going to take for that? Another medication. You see how it kind of builds on it- itself. Thyroid medications cause seizures, pounding heart, double vision. And digestive stress, Tums, acids, so that causes you to lose your, you lose your appetite. Does any of this fix it? No, like I said, our goal is to get down to the root cause. So here's a real quick test you can do in your house. Go into your, go in, open up your, how many medicines you have. So if I have two people, one has 20 medications and one has toothpaste, which do you think is healthier? 
The one who just has toothpaste. It's, see, this is very common sense. That's why I'm saying we have to look at what we're doing on a day-to-day basis and take a different approach. Instead of being a victim, we start to become of our health. And I mean, and medicine has done great of imp- causing longevity, increasing how long people are living. But realistically, do you want to live to 94, but at 50 being a, in a wheelchair? Or do you want to live all the way to 94, being able to have fun with your grandkids, take Personally, that's the type of life that I So here are a few things that you can do with it. You can, uh, you can get red, red lenses. And the red lenses... Oh, he got his phone. Yeah, uh, I went and got my phone because I was going to be the tech guy for this demo. So <laughs> um, basically, we are, the way God designed us, if you think back just 200 years ago before the light bulb, you know, the sun came up, we had light, the sun went down, there was dusk, which kind of signaled to your body it's getting to be time to sleep. Um, with our phones and devices, TVs, we're getting blasted with that daylight spectrum light right up until it's time to go to bed. And people are having more and more sleep problems, and it's because there's just not that natural cue of dusk. Light is decreasing. Your body's getting cued. It's time to go to sleep, right? So one way to decrease stress, iPhones have this built right in. If you have an Android, they have an app that'll do the exact same thing. You just install the app. But you go to your settings on your phone. You can follow along right now if you like, and then you go to, um, I'm sorry, I practiced this, so I know, uh, display and brightness, and then not too far from the top, it says night shift. So I, I have mine set so that at 8 p.m., the lights, you know, it, it takes out a lot of the blue spectrum lights, they're the ones that kind of signal it's time to be awake. Um, at, at 8 p.m., mine goes down, and then at 7 p.m., it'll come back to bright again. So then that, that helps to trigger and let your body know it's sleep time and it decreases the light. And I can tell you I've got um, one of my sons really likes computer games and if we let him play all the way to bedtime, he actually has insomnia and he's 11. Like he should not have trouble sleeping. If we keep the electronics away in the evenings, he sleeps so much better. So it's, it's, it's definitely a thing and that's something we can definitely do to easily help. Another way you can, something you should consider in your bedroom have a lamp with a low wattage incandescent bulb, um, not uh, bright LED lights that emit a lot of blue light, but get a like, kind of a warm light, um, low amperage light bulbs in a lamp in your room, and don't turn on the bright overhead lights, and just use those and commit to just using those in the evenings to trigger to your brain, it's time to calm down, it's, it's, it's sleepy time. So um, if you want to go further, you can, for 10 bucks, you can buy red lensed lights, or glasses, glasses, sorry, on Amazon, which you can pop those on in the evening and put yourself into night, 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 night mode. Sorry, I got kids. <laughs> <laughs> time to go sleepy night, night. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th- definitely there's stuff we can do to help decrease that light exposure to decrease stress. So I will let Ben okay. take over again. I will, uh, so I actually keep mine on nighttime mode all the time because the LED and fluorescent lights, that's going to get a lot of blue, blue light. I find out I'm much calmer when I have that going on. Uh, another thing is uh, dampen sound input, meaning, you know, at night, I listen to either uh, binaural beats or healing tones. And if it's like, if I'm overly stressed, I don't even listen to that. I put earplugs in because what we want to do is allow our brain to go into what's called theta brain waves. The only reason I listen to the healing tones is, uh, is because they actually take your body into that theta brain wave, which is a resting time period. That's where you're at right before you go to sleep and right when you wake up. And this also prevents your brain from going overactive. We're going to talk about nu- nutrition after break. Meditation and stress relief. This is, uh, you know, and biblically it says renew your mind. This is when you're basically going through, allowing your mind to, to slow down. And I do box breathing for this. I do seven seconds in. Hold for seven seconds, seven seconds out, and then hold for seven seconds. And generally when I'm doing this, I'm focusing on my breathing. And before I start, I'll, ask, I'll pray and I'll ask God a question. And this slows me down and gets, gets me, my mind and my environment quiet. And then uh, uh, finally, the chiropractic adjustment. This is huge. We do what's called upper cervical base care, which is at the top of the spine, there's a nerve called the vagus nerve. And that deals with rest and digest throughout most of the body. By, just adjust, by adjusting that and focusing on that, that allows that body to come down. So like, for instance, a lot of my patients who come in in the evening, if they're overly stressed, I don't adjust their, th- their mid-back because that deals with the sympathetic. 
I just adjust here so that, they can, so that they can rest. But in order to get the best adjustment there, what you have to do is what's called a surface EMG or thermal scan. That shows us how those muscles are pulling if there's inflammation. Then we take some x-rays, and those x-rays show us the specific position so we can give the correct adjustment to take the pressure off of that atlas. That's one of the things that differentiates us. We don't just pop and pray. We want to make sure we're stimulating your nervous system exactly as it should so that we can, with the intentionality of allowing your body to get back in the position so that, you know, it can heal our premises. The power that made the body heals the body. We just want, we don't want to, we don't want to cause any trouble. We want to make sure that we're getting out of the way so that God's work, healing power can work the way it's supposed to. All right, so um, if you, I believe Aaron handed out little pictures. There's a blue spine on a sheet, and it, if, if you get a chance later, just go through and read that. Um, but just focus right now on the top few levels of the neck, um, C1, C2, C3. If you go to the right a little bit, you'll see all the different parts of the body controlled by the nerves that exit the spine at that point. And then a little bit further to the right are common symptoms that you'll see. So for instance, if your C1's out of alignment, Headaches are really common, trouble sleeping, tiredness. Blood pressure is in there, another stress one, right? Um, the Journal of Human Hypertension published a study showing they were testing the type of chiropractic that we do. It's called Blair Upper Cervical. Um, and, and that was the test group. And the control groups had uh, blood pressure medications. And we were actually more successful at lowering blood pressure in that study than the drugs were. And to me, it makes way more sense to find the cause and fix it than to keep putting tape over your check engine light, right? And that's what I feel with the medications. Yes, it's successful at lowering your blood pressure, but the second the pill wears off, it comes right back up. So you continually have to take the pill to cover it. So it just makes way more sense to find the cause. So anyways, um, if you go through that list and see if you see any symptoms that you have, you can trace it back and see which part of your, your spine it might be coming from. So I, I love that sheet. Um, I think it's a really powerful tool to illustrate the whole, you, know, you can see the picture of the nervous system here. You know, God put the most amazing healing power in our bodies that flows from the brain above, down, inside out. Even for your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, the messages have to flow from the brain, through the cord, and out through the nerves. If we take your brain out, what would happen? You either die or become a politician, right? If you cut, sorry, <laughs> apologies to any politicians in the crowd. If you cut every nerve to your heart, just your heart would stop, same result, right? Where the chiropractic comes in is when you get a twist in the spine. We call it a subluxation, and it pinches the nerves. If it blocked 20% of the message to your heart, it still works. It just doesn't work as well. And do you think if your heart isn't working as well, are you more or less likely to have a heart attack? The answer is obvious, right? So that's why we treat these misalignments in the spine called subluxation so seriously, because the, the longer they're there, the more health problems start showing up. And we, we blame bad luck, bad genetics, you know, oh, it's just old age. You know, but there's, there's other cultures where people are 100 years old still climbing mango trees and, and picking mangoes, you know? So it's not just old age, and it's not bad luck. A lot of times it's just the messages are not making it to the tissues that they're supposed to control. So it's, it's, I think it's the biggest secret in healing is just tapping into that God-given ability to heal and letting your body heal itself. When you get a cast on your arm because you've broken your arm, is it the cast that heals it? No, the cast holds it straight so then God's design can do its work and heal your body. So our bodies are meant to heal and be well, and we just need to, you know, we need to remember that. You know, I promise you, you don't get a headache because God left the Tylenol out of your bloodstream. You know, we don't get sick because we lack medications. We get sick because there's something interfering with healing, interfering with function. So that's, that's what we're passionate about doing, is finding what's interfering with that healing. You know, be it um, a misalignment in the spine, be it your diet, maybe it's you know, a lack of sleep, you know, but what, that's what we want to do is find the cause rather than keep putting black tape over the check engine light so you can keep driving. So um, here's some warning signs and symptoms that you may have misalignments in the spine. So headaches, definitely one of the most common ones. High blood pressure, dizziness is up there. Um, ear and sinus is in, definitely in that C2, C3 area. Um, shoulder arm pain. So if you're that person with the tight shoulders all the time, you go for a massage, but then two, three days later, you're right back where you started. Um, once we get the pressure off the nerves, you get a massage and it lasts. Um, you know, asthma, allergies, numbness and tingling. If you've got numbness and tingling, it's a, it's a given. You definitely have pressure in your nervous system. That's the only thing that causes that. Digestive problems, so that's getting into that sympathetic, parasympathetic, you know, 
running from a bear or rest or digest mode. Um, hormone issues, sciatica, pain coming down your leg is definitely pressure on the nerves. You know, and then just energy levels. That's really common in your upper neck areas. So um, they did a study of 311 people, 65 or older, to study the effect of, of just doing long-term chiropractic maintenance care. So in this group, anybody, they were looking for people that had done chiropractic for five years of maintenance or more. The chiropractic group, just the highlight reel, was 60% fewer hospital admissions, 59% less days hospitalized, um, 62% less outpatient procedures, um, and, and it was 85% less pharmaceutical costs. So that says, you know, definitely better quality of life, and you're going to save a lot of money just by taking care of your spine. In today's day and age, you know, one major, you're one major sickness away from going bankrupt. It's the number one cause of bankruptcy. So it just makes sense to prevent and to be healthy. So I think it's awesome that Darren's reaching out, and he's got other people coming to do health lectures. You know, he cares for his people. <laughs> he wants them to be healthy. You know, we need to take care of our earthly vessels. I think we're here to, you know, to worship and serve the Lord, and it's a lot harder to do from a hospital bed. So we have, you know, I think we, we, we have a responsibility to take care of our earthly vessels so then we can do what God wants us to do on this planet. So, um, so first step to health. Um, what we're offering, um, you know, Ben talked about the steps that we do in an examination to see if you have um, pressure on your spine. Um, we spend 45 minutes with you. We do infrared thermal scanning, surface EMG, a ton of testing to see exactly if you have pressure on your spine. If you don't, you know, we'll, we'll find out what the cause is. Um, it's normally, it can be, it's between 95 to 160 depending on the diagnosis codes, but we're doing it for a flat $39 come in, you'll get all the testing done. And then we're actually going to take that 39 if you sign up today and donate it to the Pflugerville Pregnancy Resource Center. So it's basically for free, um, you know, just to help a great cause in our community. So if anybody's interested in getting your spine checked, it's our, it is our buy now, today only incentive just to, because you know, people will, will tend to ask, oh, can I have a card? I call a card a procrastination ticket. Um, you'll go home, you put it in your drawer with great intentions, but then you just forget about it, right? So we want you to take action today. Um, so Erin is in the back, and she would be happy to help you um, with, a, with that deal to come in and get your spine checked. Um, we're going to do a quick five-minute break while you do that, run to the bathroom, do everything you need, try to get it done in five minutes so we can stay on schedule here, and then we'll come back to learn about to to stress from toxicity and then nutritional stress. I love the nutritional stuff. Um, stay tuned. It's going to be worth sticking around for. So thank you guys so much, um, and Aaron is in the back. If you have any questions on this first half, Dr. Ben and I will be in the back to answer them as well. So thank you. Welcome back. Uh, Dr. Gerard is going to be going over stress, and I realize we've been talking very, very fast. One of the reasons we're doing that is because we want to make sure that we're able to get you some highlights. We could spend hours on each one of these topics, and so we're, going, we're trying to give you enough information that you can understand why you, need to go, why you can need to go home, make a change, and the steps to do that. So I apologize for talking fast, but that's one of the things when we work with Pastor Darren on making sure that we can break these down and get you all that information and to start uh, getting you all moving in that right direction. But definitely take the action steps we're going to be get, we're, we already gave you and are going to be giving you. And, and two, just along the lines of what he just said, is we're, we're here for you. We, this is what we love to do is teach people, get people healthier. So if you have questions, you can talk to us after, but also get our information. We've got business cards. We've got procrastination tickets in the back. Um, email us. We're happy to answer your questions. I even give all my patients my cell phone. They text, you know, I've had people text me from the hospital room asking, what should I do? And I'm happy to give my opinion anyways. Um, but we're happy to help you with your health health journey. So we're, we're here for you. I don't care if you are or are not a patient. If you have questions and you don't get them answered today, just email us. We're happy to help. So I've got the magical clicker in my pocket. So chemical stress. You know, I, I think chemical stress is not one that was an issue 50 years ago, but with advancements in science, you know, you start turning around your labels, which we're going to cover, and you're going to see more and more and more chemical names in the products we eat, the, you know, the things we're exposed to day in, day out, even, you know, our carpet off, off gases, um, formaldehyde, and we're, we're kind of constantly exposed to chemicals day in, day out, and that puts a lot of stress on our body. So it's not stress like pulling out your hair stress, but it definitely stresses a human or animal body to be exposed to toxins all the time. So, oh, I turned it off. I have to point it that way? Okay, all right. 
Do I have to go underneath my leg or something? You can try that too. I think I made the mistake of turning it off at the break. I'll work on it. All right. He's going to work on it. Uh, actually, yeah, that's not. There it is. All right. So, Franken food. Our FDA has approved approximately 3,000 food additives. The scary part is the average person ingests 150 pounds of food additives every year. That's like eating a whole person. Maybe not one the size of Ben, but a regular sized person every year in food additives. You know, I think that's pretty scary. And the thing with a lot of these, these uh, food additives and, and chemicals is they persist in your body. They, they don't necessarily get you know, go through the digestive tract, like a lot of stuff, um, some of the chemical stuff, your body doesn't know how to process it, so it sends it over to the fat cells and holds on to it. You know, sometimes people will be resistant to losing weight, and a lot of times it's because you're toxic. Um, because if you keep the same amount of toxins and you lose some fat, the toxins become more concentrated. So your body tries to store more fat to dilute the toxins in your body. So it's just definitely something to consider. Um, not good. So this is where buying organic, which we'll cover, um, can be important, or reading your labels is very important. <laughs> okay. All right. So real quick here, your typical um, Burger King, McDonald's, strawberry milkshake, both, both brands, if you take a look at the ingredient list, neither of them, hit it again, neither of them, if you read through that list of chemicals, there's no strawberries, hit it one more time, and no milk in, <laughs> in those. So go ahead and hit it again. So diet drinks, it sounds like the perfect solution, right? No calories, safe for diabetics, um, but the problem is the artificial sweeteners, the aspartame, you can go ahead and hit it. Um, it's a neurotoxin, so it can lead to brain damage, dementia, uh, migraine headaches, seizures, degenerative brain disorders, episodic violence, learning disorders. So definitely aspartame is a bad thing. It, it's a little bit extreme, but there's a website, Aspartame Kills. You can go there, and they've got all the research posts about aspartame there. But one that's not on here that a study I recently read is they're linking Diet Coke to lung cancer in people that don't even smoke. It's crazy, right? You think that lung cancer is only for smokers, but you can get it from Diet Coke. Just scary. I'd sooner see you drinking the, the regular Coke than the diet stuff because of how dangerous aspartame is. Both of them are bad for you, but um, Splenda, you think it's better because it's made from sugar, but it, it's a whole chemical process. You can see that's, that's the whole process. So then you get down to, um, it, it is now 1,6 dichloro, 1,6 di, what is it, dioxy, beta d furosinol, 4 chloro, 4 deoxy, alpha galacto, whatever, right? <laughs> it's not sugar anymore. Your body gets that, and it does not know what to do with that toxin. So, you know, we start with something that God made, and then when man gets in there, we kind of mess things up. So, you know, and that's, uh, you know, often easy advice when it comes to diet. Eat the stuff on the outside of the grocery store that can go bad. The stuff that can live on the shelf for years and not rot, that's typically, you know, if, if it can't, if it can't, uh, feed bacteria, it probably can't feed you either, and your body just doesn't know what to do with these chemicals. So, um, Splend or Stevia is, is an acceptable alternative. Just turn it around and look at your labels, um, because sometimes the Stevia, the first ingredient will be dextrose, which is sugar. So, um, try to get stuff that's just Stevia. Um, and, and if you're not used to it, you've got to add it slowly, because it can get bitter um, if you put too much. Um, you can use xylitol too. Too much xylitol can sometimes lead to stomach issues, so just add that slowly and carefully as well. Um, Lunchables, just another example of reading your labels. You know, we think we're giving our kids something healthy, and there's like, there's known carcinogens in there. There's, you know, um, red number 40 in there, derived from the exoskeletons of beetles, so definitely. <laughs> The bottom line is read your labels. You know, the less ingredients, the better. Chicken McNuggets are 38 ingredients, mostly from corn. So they should actually rename them to Corn McNuggets um, instead of Chicken McNuggets. If, if you want to, uh, a real quick look, if you flip it over and can't immediately read it, but need to break out glasses to read your, your label, just go ahead and set it down. Yeah. Stay away from it. Yeah, <laughs> it should be. The less ingredients, typically, the healthier it is. Um, and an alarming one with the McNuggets, they, um, they put TBHQ on there. Um, 
to preserve French freshness, but it's petroleum de derived. I think I have a slide about that, yeah. So anti-foaming agents in there, um, TBHQ, derived from petroleum. So it's like spritzing some gasoline on there before you eat your nuggets. Um, just something to consider. Um, pesticides, so there's three million tons of pesticides used yearly. Th three million tons. It's uh, hard to, you know, and, it, and it's hard to, you know, it's not hard to understand why we're seeing, you know, different disorders linked to their use. So um, nervous system disorders, immune system suppression, childhood cancer, breast cancer, diabetes, reproductive damage. You know, I think it's one in five couples now have trouble conceiving children. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm not surprised as to why. You know, hormone problems, asthma, ADHD, autism, migraine headaches, developmental delays. Um, I, I saw a study too, there's this region in Canada where there was high levels of Parkinson's disease, and then they found it, they, it overlaid perfectly with a map of where they grew fruits and vegetables, and there was a specific farm chemical they were using that was destroying the substantia nigra in the brain leading to that, that condition. So it's just, um, we don't know, like, it, it can be exposure to a chemical today that leads to a disease 20 years from now. You know, the drug DES they gave to mothers in the 60s and 70s for, to, to have children with uh, healthy birth weights, but then it led to, um, uh, oh shoot, it led to infertility in, in the, the women, the, the female children that were born. So you didn't know the effects of this until they were, you know, the age, childbearing age. So 20 years later is the effect of this drug that the mother took while she was pregnant. So it's just always err on the side of less is more when it comes to chemicals going in your body. Um, so some of you might think, well, it's too expensive to have organic everything. Don't panic. Write down foodnews.org. They maintain a list. They call the Clean 15 Dirty Dozen. The Clean 15 are ones where it's not so important to have organic because they use less chemicals in their production. And the Dirty Dozen, you don't want to touch them unless they're, they're organic. So um, a great list. To, and they, they're always updating it. It's a good resource for you. Um, food dyes. Um, they're just excitotoxins. They're neurotoxins. And I, the big the hyperactivity, the bottom one, I have my middle child, um, if, he ha if somebody gives him candy with dyes and whatnot, you can physically see the antlers sprouting <laughs> from his head and he turns, <laughs> his little angel wings fall off and he becomes a wild animal. <laughs> so definitely, you know, some kids are more affected by these, but it's, it, you know, kids are the biggest at risk to these artificial dyes and they're really unhealthy for us. Um, so just something to consider. Um, our kids end up hyper and, uh, you know, it might be the stuff that they're eating and then instead of taking away the bad food, we just go add, you know, Ritalin or something like that. So it's just a, a chemical problem solved by more chemicals. It's just really backwards. Um, nitrites, 67% increased risk of pancreatic cancer. The World Cancer Research Fund concluded that processed meats were too dangerous for human consumption. We know this now. So a lot of the labels will, will mark that it's nitrite-free, so just look for it. That's till we're done? Till he's up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just, we know MSG is bad. We just wanted to cover some of the, the ways they hide it. So something interesting about MSG, when they want to make a lab rat obese for, for a, a, an animal study on obesity, they inject it with MSG. So that's just that's one thing with MSG. There's a whole bunch of reasons to not consume it. But um, if you see hydrolyzed, basically anything protein, it's probably MSG, um, vegetable protein, textured protein. They use a lot of aliases to hide MSG. Um, heavy metal toxins, just to do this one quickly, um, you may have heard of Mad Hatter's disease. <laughs> Hatters would go crazy because of their exposure to mercury and making hats. Um, we have it in our teeth, those silver fillings. If you have four of them, um, you're exposed to up to 100 times your daily allowable amount of mercury every single day. Um, there's a website, iaomt.org, with a lot of research on it, and there's a database of dentists that can safely remove those fillings from your mouth. Um, but it's definitely, it's, it's a big deal. And then also aluminum in your deodorant is a real yeah. quick way people get it. Definitely, and then something interesting, deodorant versus antiperspirant, Three quarters of breast cancer tumors are in this upper quadrant near the armpit. We sweat to naturally detox. There's definitely a link. So you're better off with deodorant than antiperspirant. Um, 
I'll warn you, it takes a little time of experimentation trying different deodorants until you find one that will work that's natural, um, but it's worth it. You know, I'd much sooner be stinky than, you know, dying of cancer, so. Um, I'll do this as quickly as I can. Ten ways to detox, so just eating healthy foods. Um, cruciferous vegetables, berries, garlic, spices like turmeric can help your, your detox pathways to work better. Just definitely for anything health related, the more veggies you eat, the better. Um, reduce inflammation, so anti-inflammatory diet, uh, wild-caught seafood, plant foods rich in omega-3s. So reducing inflammation, higher the omega-3s, definitely the better. Supporting your gut, so I, I think a probiotic, you know, several times a year is a great idea to, to keep your gut bacteria healthy, especially if you have an antibiotic. Once that's done, you want to rebuild your gut bacteria with a probiotic. Um, drinking plenty of clean water. You're supposed to take your body weight, so I'm 210. I divide that in two, I get the number 105, and I should have 105 ounces of water per day. Seems like a lot at first. You may make a lot of trips to the bathroom at first, but then you get used to it. You, we need, that's like a base amount. Not, not, and when it's hot outside like this, you probably need more um, just to have basic health. Um, and I could go on on that one for a while. Adequate sleep, your body repairs when you sleep. So if you're not sleeping, you're not repairing, you're not gonna detox as well, not be as healthy. Sweat out your toxins, exercise. There's, there's really not a condition where there hasn't been a study saying that exercise helps that condition. So I, you know, I could do a whole other lecture on exercise, but I think Pastor D has already set up somebody to talk to you about exercise in a coming lecture here. Um, minimize exposure, the best way to detox is to not retox. So um, biggest culprits, your personal hygiene products and your cleaning products in your house. Um, supplement your natural detoxification process. So there's a lot of companies that sell a detox product. Um, I just recommend cycle through them. Like don't do the same one every time. Um, go to like a vitamin shop or you know, Whole Foods, anything like that. They all sell detox programs. Go through one a couple times a year just to help aid your body in detoxing. Supplement your natural detox. Oh, whoops and then supplement your immune system. So sleep is huge in the immune system. Um, managing your stress is huge. Exercise, chiropractic, vitamin D3. Um, they did a couple of studies with 5,000 5, IUs of D3 a day would decrease your chance of a cold and flu to nearly 0%. Um, so D3 is huge. You can talk to us about that after. Lastly, visit a chiropractor. Chiropractic adjustments impact your nervous system, which controls all metabolic pathways in the body, so it makes you a you know, the most efficient detoxer you could possibly be by keeping your spine aligned. And I think, here's Dr. Ben. Sorry I stole a couple of your, your minutes there, bud. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, one of the things I learned is you can't detoxify if uh, your nervous system is working, and also digestion. If those digestive organs aren't working, you're not going to digest food. You can be an optimal food, but you're not going to digest it. Now, there's a lot of things that we talk about, uh, we've talked about so far, but getting on nutrition, I always go back to the saying, let food, uh, let food be thy medicine. So we want to look at what we're actually putting in on a base level. We look at the amount of calories that come in. Alcohol uh, is 82, this is standard American diet. But we look at things like grass uh, or grain-based desserts or yeast breads. You look, a lot of those things, people go, oh, I don't eat sugar, but I eat this bread. I don't eat sugar or, you know, and so they start adding it in and we don't think about things like rice and bread that can create inflammation uh, and actually start to put on some of the weight. One of the things that we can start to do to heal our gut is cut the sugar and things that turn into sugar. What I mean by that is uh, if, have any of you ever known an alcoholic, right? Okay, so would, if there was an alcoholic, would I go, oh, it's okay, you can have two beers, no, because they're going to go off the wagon. Well, what happens is we get so stressed, we get addicted to sugar, and so we become sugaraholics. This is actually eight times than cocaine. And so we become the sugaraholics, so what we have to do is we have to stop the source so that we can let our body heal, and generally it takes about four days. And to see if you're addicted to sugar, try not eating anything that turns to sugar for four days. See if you get a headache, uh, uh, if your body feels bad, you get cranky. I generally tell spouses, no, uh, uh, no divorces during this time period. You know, you have to commit, okay, it's four to five day, I'm getting healthy. I realize this may be rough, but if you, if you have a struggle with that, then you're definitely addicted to sugar, and that's going to help break it. Number one source of sugar we get is soda. This blew me away. Average American, 55 gallons of soda a year. How many of y'all have ever seen those big drums, those big oil drums? 
That's 55 gallons. And that's average. I don't drink any soda. So if I don't drink any soda, that means some people are drinking my portion. That's going to create obesity. That's going to create diabetes. Sobe, okay, this was my thing. I was like, I'm not going to drink soda, so I'm going to green tea. And I didn't want, I, I couldn't, I didn't make sense why I was gaining, why I was gaining so much weight until one of my friends goes, hey, why don't you turn it over? It had 61 grams of sugar. That's four, that's four slices of Sara Lee cherry pie. I would have three of these a day and think I was doing good because I was drinking green tea. That's where it hides us. Now, if we're getting stressed and we go in and we're like, okay, I need something. I need something that's going to give me some energy, some pick me up. You don't think about the sugar, but a rock star in a drink drink has 62 grams of sugar, which is six Krispy Kreme original glazed donuts. Six. Would you, on a day to day basis, eat six uh, Krispy Kreme original glazed donuts? I wouldn't. I know I'd be getting sick if I did. But we don't think about that when we're drinking, when ingesting it goes down so quick. Starbucks. People generally get mad at me when I bring up this slide. You look at that line when you go into Starbucks and they're ordering their triple frappuccino, all the, you know, the latte thing. This is Starbucks peppermint white chocolate mocha with whipped cream, 95 grams of sugar. That's eight and a half uh, scoops of Eddie's ice cream. Now, I like ice cream, but I don't eat eight and a half scoops. That's a lot of sugar, but people do this on a day-to-day basis, and then about two o'clock in the morning, they have an, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, they have another one because their adrenals are shot. Now, when you look, on the back of labels, we all know sugar is sugar, but lactose, honey, xanthan gum, cane juice, high fructose corn syrup, maltodextrin, uh, corn milk, fructose, maple syrup, corn syrup, sugar cane, you can see that list. Those are things that they hide in there for sugar. So you might see a third ingredient in sugar, like Nutri-Grain bars. They'll have sugar as a third ingredient, and then they'll have a list of like 12 other things, which all turn into sugar. And that's where people get confused about where they're getting their sugar from. One thing you can do if you eat bread, go to the freezer aisle. Eat Ezekiel bread. This is sprouted grain, creates less inflammation. It's much better for you. Or sugar stone ground. Uh, now, you're not going to have the, the same amount as you would have with Fruit Loops, but I used to eat those growing up. I can't eat them anymore. It's too much sugar. It's overly sweetened. In the stevia, what Dr. Gerard was talking about, if you look, that first ingredient is dextrose, and that sugar on the, uh, in the stevia on the left, you want that, something that is just plain sugar. I, I like it in the drops, or plain stevia, not sugar. I like it in the drops. Start to think about your fats, because people like to cook with canola oil. That's actually Canadian uh, low acidic oil. It was actually made from chainsaws. They just removed the acidic portion because it killed you. Uh, but they said this is a good, <laughs> a, a good unsaturated fat. It really isn't. Start eating raw nuts, seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, coconut milk, uh, grass-fed dairy. The reason you want grass-fed dairy is because uh, you are what you eat. So if it's a bad fat you're taking in, bad fat's going into the cells, so that creates inflammation. And when we talk about fat, always this myth comes up. I heard about low fat. Well, I'm going to leave it to a, uh, a cardiologist from back in 1920 to uh, uh, say it best. I began my practice as a cardiologist in 1920. I never saw a martyr myocardial infraction. Yeah, infarct. Yeah, heart attack. Uh, until 1928. Back before the fats, when people, back in the 1920s, the fats were butter and lard. And I think we could all benefit from that kind of diet. No one had ever heard of the word corn oil. So we start adding that vegetable oil in, more heart attacks, more inflammation, more cholesterol. I know Greg's telling, he's like, hey, I get butter. Look at this. Margarine, butter. The ants will not even eat the margarine. I had a McDonald's hamburger sitting on my office desk for seven years. Ant infested my office because it rained and they came up. Never touched that. So if ants won't eat it, should you? No. <laughs> coconut oil. Uh, here's some bre- uh, breast milk, butter, coconut oil, poultry. These are some good sources of fats. Now, one of the problems we see is the half-life. If, if you're like, okay, my kid has been good. We're doing McDonald's french fries today. We're celebrating. That doesn't just last with them right there when they eat it. It is actually still in their body 51 days later. 
So if every week you're doing that, you're never actually getting off the oil. This body's just clogging and building, uh, building up on itself. I want to point out the source of that quote is a book on how to it, it, the, see what the book is called, How to Stop ADHD in 18 Days. That's, that's where that came from. So we wonder why our kids are hyper. And you know, we only treat them once a week to these trans fats, but it, it's 51 and, a, 51 and a half days is the half-life. So that means it's 100 days later, and there's still a quarter of it. Your body's still struggling to get a quarter out. Like some of these things are just too damaging to, to have it be a treat. Sorry to interject, but oh, good. just wanted to stress that one. So here's some of the things we see. It's not a, we won't see trans fats, but uh, you'll start to see soybean oil, corn oil, canola oil, margarine. These are all inflammatories. When I've had people with neurological issues, we've started to pull them off of this. That with the chiropractic, we started to see some good results. And don't always believe the marketing when it says no trans fats. They set a level. The lobbyist said, okay, we want the level at 500 micrograms. Yeah per serving, and so the, they said, okay, if we can get it below 500 micrograms per serving, then we can say no trans fat, correct? They said, yes. So what do you think they did to the serving size? Decrease the serving size. Now, I'm not sure if you're like me, but I like getting a scoom, spoonful of uh, peanut butter. When they changed the serving size, they didn't change my spoon size. So inconsiderate. But so that means I'm still getting trans fats in, and it's the same product. In this, uh, this study, there was 347,000 individuals over 5 to 23 years. That's a lot of people for a study. Uh, there was no significant evidence for concluding that dietary saturated fat is associated with risk of uh, coronary heart disease or sh uh, stroke or cardiovascular disease. So guess what? You can have your good butter back. Yes. Okay, replace grains with healthy fats. So almond meal, I make an almond meal, uh, uh, almond flour pizza that I personally prefer to a regular pizza because I, feel, I, I don't feel inflamed after I eat it. Uh, and you can see through time, back in 1984, they said cholesterol, eggs, and bacon was bad. 99, woohoo, it's good. Now we're 2013, butter is awesome for you. Drink it in your coffee. If you're having good fats, your body's able to, your body's able to heal. But you also... In protein. We have to rethink what we're doing as protein because a lot of people go in, I just want to get the cheapest meats. You aren't just what you eat, you're a, you are what you eat eats. Does that make sense? So if I'm eating stuff that's eating junk, then I take that in, that junk goes into my body. Pork and shellfish, those, are, those eat junk, they're the garbage disposals. They're very toxic, they can create a lot of inflammation. So you want grass-fed beef, pasture-raised poultry, uh, free-range eggs and wild-caught fish, that's, best, that's the best proteins because the normal commercial protein, 80% uh, of all antibiotics are used on farm animals. And so if they're taking antibiotics in, you take it in, what do you think that does to the bacteria in your gut? It kills it. So that's why a lot of people go, I've never had an antibiotic. How did I kill my, my gut uh, flora, gut bacteria? Because of what you ate. So here's when we're looking at fats, we want the typical person is 20 to 1. The ID, ideal ratio is 4 to 1. Grain-fed beef is 20 to 1. Grass-fed beef is 4 to 1. Can you see why you should have grass-fed beef versus, uh, versus grain-fed? That's why when you're going to the grocery store, you're looking at a few dollars more. Spend a few, if you're going to one thing organic, do your meat organic. And then finally, one of the things we love about coming and doing talks like this is people get information. Did everybody get something that they could take home and implement today? Okay, did everybody know somebody who, could have, who should have heard this information? You're thinking Aunt Betty at home. That's why we do these talks. We want to make sure we're getting out, giving people information that they need, not only for their family, but for the people that they work with. And for me, this is a mission. My life was, uh, was bad. I was, had fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue. My mother was almost dead. She had liver disease, COPD, chronic bronchitis, anxiety, depression, and uh, seizure disorder. And it was because somebody stepped in the gap and said, hey, there's something you can do that put me onto this path of getting, of getting healthy. So what I do is I wake up every morning, I stand in that gap for people, but what I need, what Dr. Gerard needs, what our community needs, is for others to stand in the gap 
with us, to step out and go, hey, there's different information than what you're being taught. Uh, we want to help you get healthy. So when you, uh, so what I'm going to ask is, who do you know? Who are your friends, who are your family, who are sick, who are on medication and want to get off? Who are those people that we can invite to events that can hear the same information? Who at work, are they putting donuts on the table every single day at work? Is, uh, are there people who are sick and progressively getting sicker and don't have answers and they're, and they're crying and they're praying for an answer? You could be that answer by inviting them to one of these, to one of these workshops. We have a list of workshops that we do in the offices, how to stay young, fit while you sit, uh, cancer prevention, diabetes prevention. We bring in food and talk to them. So my ask is, who do you know? Who can we help? Who can we reach out? And because for me, this is my mission. I believe God put us here to do this. And so for me, this is, uh, is part of spreading that gospel. So I need y'all's help to do that. So there should be a paper uh, in, your, in your packet. I want you to write uh, where you work and some people that you know. And we'll invite them, call them, and see how we can help them. Thank y'all so much for being here today. We really appreciate y'all. And uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Dr. Gerard forgot to put the paper in the packet. Oh, so. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just come see us afterwards. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's how we get the word out is, is through free food. So, you know, we've done everything from uh, at the IRS. We did 300 people in a big lecture hall. And I've done a free lunch and learn for four people in someone's living room. So if you've got a small group, your rifle club, your sewing club, whatever you're into, um, we will provide the food and we'll come do a, a lunch and learn. And it doesn't have to be something long. Like for realtors, we have a talk that we do that's called Stress Kills Sales, 10 minutes. We come in, give them the food, um, and, and then just give them something that will hopefully set them on a path of being healthier. So that's, that's what, what we love to do is get out in the community and talk. So if you have any groups, just come see us afterwards because we we'd love to, to reach out and help get your circle of friends healthier. So thanks for having us today. Um, Dr. Ben and I will be in the back to answer any questions. Um, if you would like to take advantage of our deal on an exam, go see Aaron. Um, and otherwise, just thank you guys so much for having us. Go out and have a great rest of your Sunday. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you.